In today's Electronics and More video, I'm going to show you how you can easily test the condition of brake fluid in your vehicle in order to determine if you should keep the existing brake fluid or replace it. Now it's important to note about brake fluid, non-silicone types, is that it's hygroscopic. Hygroscopic means it wants to absorb moisture from the air. So if you read the side of the bottle, it's going to say make sure the cap is kept very tight and the purpose of that is to prevent moisture from being absorbed into the bottle. Now just by looking at brake fluid, you're not going to be able to tell the condition of the brake fluid. So what we're going to be testing for is the level of moisture in the brake fluid. It's very important that the moisture content of the brake fluid is as low as possible. The brake fluid is designed to have a very high boiling point and if the brake fluid has absorbed a fair amount of moisture from the air, what's going to happen, the boiling point is going to become lower. And that could become a big problem if you're doing excessive braking and components in your brake system begin to heat up. You do not want the brake fluid to begin to boil. You also have the problem that moisture inside the brake fluid can lead to corrosion of brake components. In order to perform the test, you're going to require a moisture tester like you see right here. It's a probe. You take this, insert it into the brake fluid, push the button on the end, and you're going to have an indication of the water content in the brake fluid. So if you look right over here, that's 0%, which is green. These two LEDs, which says OK, less than 1%, 2%. And if you see the red LEDs on 3% or greater than 4%, you're definitely going to want to flush out that brake fluid from your system. These testing pens are rather inexpensive. They're super compact, and you can put them right inside your tool pouch and have them ready to go. I'm now going to give you a quick demonstration. Right here is a sample of brand new brake fluid. Let's take a look. Insert. And as you can see, it's right around under 1%. Now you can also test using a digital multimeter if you place it on a high ohms, 10 mega ohm or higher resistance range. Place the tips about that far apart and you'll get a fairly accurate reading. It won't be as accurate as the pen or as quick but it will still give you an idea if the brake fluid has excessive levels of moisture or normal levels of moisture. So place it in. The reading you see should rise above 5 megaohm if the fluid is acceptable. If it stays below 5 megaohm, that's an indication you're going to want to change the fluid. And as you can see, it's rising up and above the 5 meg ohm range. So this brake fluid would be considered good. Now let's take a reading on the vehicle to see how it compares to the brand new brake fluid, which gives us a reading of just under 1%. Now I'm going to put the pen inside the brake fluid only enough to submerge the majority of these two probes. And you can see the probes are about 3 16 of an inch apart. I could push the button first. You can see there's a green LED. 
I want to make sure I do not see any red showing up. If I do, I'm going to have to flush the system. Here we go. And as you can see, it's not looking good. It's showing the last one lighting up at four. Now that I know this brake fluid needs to be replaced, the next step, you're going to suction out the brake fluid from this reservoir. I'll place it inside here. Once the reservoir is filled with fresh brake fluid, I'm going to begin the bleeding process with the furthest wheel from the cylinder, which is going to be the passenger's rear. Let me take off the rear wheel and show you how it's done. Okay, the brake bleeding process is very simple. Over here is the bleed bolt. In my case, is a 10 millimeter open end wrench. It's going to loosen it to allow the brake fluid to escape. Now, you don't have to use a check valve like you see right here. I'll place a link in the video description area if you want one of these. It makes it very simple to bleed the brakes by yourself. But if you don't have a check valve, you can use a straight piece of vinyl tubing. Make sure the end of the tubing is submerged inside brake fluid because what's going to happen as you push down on the brake pedal, the fluid is going to move forward. And when you lift the pedal up, it's going to want to retract a little bit. So you don't want to draw any air back into the system. That's why you want to keep the end of the tube without a check valve submerged in brake fluid. So what I'm going to do now is just loosen this, get in the car, continue to slowly push the pedal all the way down and up, down and up, until I see clear fluid flowing through the line without any air bubbles. While you're doing this, make sure the reservoir is kept full. You do not want it to go dry and draw air into the system. And as you can see, after pushing the pedal a few times, the line is full of liquid. There's some air right here. Check valve is holding everything from allowing air to go backwards. So let me keep pressing and keep flushing out the old fluid. Once this is complete, you're going to tighten the nut, remove this, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please be sure to rate, thumbs up, subscribe, and post links to this video on other websites and blogs. Thank you very much for watching.